Good morning, everybody. And I know on this channel, we have talked a lot about vaccines. So we are back again today to specifically talk about 1P36 deletion syndrome and the Moderna vaccine. Now, something you might not know about me is I am a caregiver for an individual who has 1P36 deletion syndrome. I am a registered nurse. I am not your registered nurse. Always check with your team of medical professionals prior to making any decision that affects your body or the body of someone you are caring for. Just a quick brief synopsis of my individual with 1P36 deletion syndrome that I care for. Many of us are aware that 1P36 deletion syndrome comes across a spectrum, kind of like autism comes across as a spectrum, 1P36 deletion comes across as a spectrum. It depends on what part of your specific genes have been deleted to tell how severe the condition is or specifically what symptoms you will have. Now, my individual that I care for with 1P36 deletion syndrome, you would not know that she has it. She is quite independent in the sense that she is able to, she's able to walk, she's able to talk, communicate very well, um, she does have an intellectual disability, which affects her daily activities somewhat. She is able to easily get manipulated or taken advantage of, hence why she has a guardian. She also has a heart condition, and it has been linked to 1P36 because it's been found that 50% of people who have the diagnosis of 1P36 deletion syndrome do develop dilated cardiomyopathy which is what her specific heart condition is. So that is basically the worst part of her deletion is the dilated cardiomyopathy. She is on a variety of medications. And for the longest time, we did not know that she had the dilated cardiomyopathy because she's able to walk, talk, function. She was able to participate in sports and everything just fine. The only thing she would notice from time to time is that she was more tired. But, you know, fatigue in our population is common, you know, in general. Healthy people in general, too, have fatigue. So, you know, it was kind of hard to decipher that. But eventually her condition did get found and she did get diagnosed. So keep in mind that she is extremely high functioning. And I know that a lot of people who find out that they have 1P36 deletion syndrome do have more severe disabilities. So I do keep that in mind when I make these videos and talk about certain conditions that we are very fortunate with caring for the individual that we care for, that she is so extremely high functioning and that she is able to communicate with us if something is wrong so we can get her the medical attention that she would need. So that being said, she has completed the entire Moderna series. She started with her first vaccine at the end of February. Um, in our state, she was eligible. So around the end of February, she got her first vaccine. She did find the first day. She was a little tired the second day. But after that, really all her symptoms went away until a week later. And this happened with me as well. Exactly seven days after the vaccine, she developed what was called COVID arm. Now, we did get her vaccine in her leg due to the fact that she has the heart condition. So we're able to easier, it's easier for us to decipher if she's having arm pain, you know, that it could be her heart. So we always do vaccines in her leg. It's just much more simpler with her heart condition. So we got her vaccine in her leg and she developed the COVID arm a week later. It I will insert a picture here as well as to what she actually went through. The spot was quite large, quite red as you can see, and it was extremely itchy. She complained constantly about the itching. Although we never saw her scratching it, she complained about it constantly being itchy. So she must have had some self-control because I know when I had the COVID arm and I have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, mine was quite itchy and I actually scratched mine. So she must have some amazing self-control to not be scratching that. But what we ended up doing with her leg is we ended up putting triacimolome cream on it or Kenalog is another name for it, cream. 
and we put that on for about four days and it eventually calmed down and she was fine. So fast forward three more weeks because Moderna is four weeks apart and she got her second vaccine. We were prepared this time with the Kenalog cream and everything and I was prepared because I had such severe symptoms with my Ehlers-Danlos and mast cell with the second vaccine. I was prepared for her to have some problems as well. Lo and behold, nothing. She was maybe a little more fatigued, maybe, but really absolutely nothing. She was perfectly fine with the second one. Hardly any, sim really no symptoms at all. You wouldn't, wouldn't have known she got it. And she did not get the COVID arm the second time, which is very common amongst the population. You typically get it the first time, but not the second time. I ended up getting it both times, but that's my mast cell activation disorder. Um, but she did not get the COVID arm the second time. So overall, the vaccine process with her was very simple. So that being said, would I recommend someone to get the vaccine with 1P36 deletion syndrome? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think part of her not having such a severe reaction or having really any reactions at all is there's been some studies published about the amazing immune systems of people with 1P36 deletion syndrome. And I think that had a lot to do with it. I think that did. So she did absolutely fine with the vaccine. Like I said, fatigue and the itchy spot was really her only side effects. So if she had to get the vaccine again, Absolutely. Absolutely. So I encourage you to subscribe. Any questions, comments, concerns down in the description box below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.